Uh, but with how the government handled the COVID issues, hmm. how I started to see the totalitarian nature uh, of the way that the government was overstretching, stepping on the Bill of Rights, I kind of I was I was more than happy to put my plans on pause, set things aside to go out and speak about the uh, the liberty movement and how things could be better if we would vote candidates in who were liberty minded. Can I pause for a second and, and just note that uh, we got Brian on here who is getting uh, Congressman Massey on, and our typical lineup includes like homeless people that believe in Bigfoot. <laughs> Welcome to the Brian Nichols Show, your source for common sense politics on the We Are Libertarians Network. The Brian Nichols Show is the fastest growing liberty podcast that brings together people from all means of political thought as we seek to have meaningful conversations about the issues you care about. At the Brian Nichols Show, our goal is to leave the audience educated, enlightened, and informed. And now your host, Brian Nichols. Well, happy Sunday there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show. Thank you for joining us on today's fun-filled episode. And yes, it's coming a little later than normal. I didn't get it to you at 5 a.m. I'm sorry, but I have a good excuse. It's because I was able to actually get you an episode today with an actual candidate. That's right. You heard me back on Friday's episode with uh, Angela McCardle. At the end, I was like, I don't know who I'm going to have on the show because I didn't have a candidate to talk to. Well, guess what? Between then and now, I was able to uh, be reached out to uh, by one uh, candidate's campaign, and that is one Jacob Turner. Now, Jacob is running for Congress out in Missouri's 8th Congressional District. Uh, let's try that again. 8th Congressional District. We can do this today, folks. It's been a long day, by the way. Today's Sunday. I'm recording three episodes. That's right. So strap in for that. But uh, with that being said, Jacob Turner was able to join the program, and I'm so thankful that I was able to have him the show because we were able to focus on three specific issues that are impacting Missouri's 8th District, specifically two, well, two rather that are more national, being number one, the COVID lockdowns and the uh, the infringement on the Bill of Rights, and, and number two, uh, looking at the gun rights, and gun rights being a really important issue. Um, it's not the Second Amendment, or rather the Second Suggestion, uh, the paraphrase uh, Larry Sharp, uh, but then looking more specifically in terms of economics uh, in his local district, uh, how really from 2016 to 2018, the, the GOP just dropped the ball in not being there to help, in this case, his eighth district. So focusing on helping small businesses who were hurt over those two years and beyond um, versus his uh, the incumbent Republican candidate. So uh, with that being said, folks, it's a great conversation with, I think, a very great candidate. So that being said, on to the show, Jacob Turner here on The Brian Nichols Show. Thanks for having me, sir. Absolutely. Jacob, thank you for joining the program on, yes, today's awesome Sunday Candidate Highlight Series. Now, you came in clutch because I candidly didn't have a candidate. And I was thinking, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? And then uh, your your uh, campaign staff uh, there with Patrick reached out and he said, hey, we have a, a congressional candidate running as a libertarian out in Missouri's 8th Congressional District. And uh, he'd be great for your show. And I candidly agree. So with that being said, Jacob Turner, you are running, yes, as I tease, as a libertarian uh, for office out there in uh, Missouri's 8th District. So let's have a this introduce yourself to the audience and what got you into uh, running for politics number one and number two what got you down this pathway to liberty well my name is jacob turner i'm a marine corps veteran of eight years i served in the marine corps i got out i opened a business and as the business started going successful uh, i volunteer out in my community and work out in my community as much as possible i work on an ambulance uh, 12 hours a week to kind of help out because there's a shortage in medics uh, the reason I got interested in politics, my goal, my long-term goal, I'm working, I just finished my first degree, I'm working to go to medical school, uh, but with how the government handled the COVID issues, hmm. how I started to see the totalitarian nature uh, of the way that the government was overstretching, stepping on the Bill of Rights, I, kinda, I, was, I was more than happy to put my plans on pause, set things aside to go out and speak about the uh, the liberty movement and how things could be better if we would vote candidates in who were liberty minded. What brought me to the liberty movement? I've always been a student of Ron Paul. I've, he caught my attention when I was a young man in, in the military, uh, and I've read a lot of his books, studied him for a long time. I would say that learning about things like the Austrian economic system and the free market have really shifted my way of thinking. And I would say this as well. I grew up in a Republican family. I'm from a district that is 80% Republican. 
So growing up in that family, that's the way I perceived everything. And I thought that Republican politicians we're about liberty and we're about freedom because they always go off and they preach this. But then when they, they get up to the time, <laughs> they run like libertarians on a campaign and then they vote like uh, just like a Democrat or the Repo Republicans up on the hill. So uh, the thing was, is that I, I seen like most Republicans in my district during the first two years of President Trump's term that they had full control. They could have enacted and stripped away. All, uh, all the garbage that has trampled on our freedoms and our rights. They could have they could have given us back the liberties that have been stolen away over time. And instead, they chose to do nothing. Bingo. Not a thing. So that right there, that right there showed me. That was the proof I needed. I was done. Jacob, Jacob you, you were the first candidate I have had on my program in dozens, quite literally dozens and dozens of candidates to bring this up that all for all the Liberty Republicans out there. And I, and trust me, I I'm empathetic to the Liberty Republican argument. I get it. I hear it. I see right. the value. Don't get me wrong. However, from a federal perspective, the GOP dropped the ball entirely and, and they should have severed any trust in any Liberty Republican from 2016 to 2018, because to your point, not only did they have the white house, they had control of the Congress from both the house and the Senate. That's a big deal. Right. And they didn't do anything with it. I mean, no. what? They got a, a tax cut, I think, maybe the tr Trump tax cuts. They didn't reduce spending at all. Um, they minor. did. Yeah, they did some some fin finicky things with Obamacare. So they kind of neutered that a little bit. But I mean, other than that, what? <laughs> really? And that's the point. That's the value I think libertarians need to start selling more is not just that we're not the Republicans or Democrats, but rather if you're a liberal Republican, like, like, look at this. Not only are we not just the other, the alternative, but we actually are really the, the people who are going to do what the team that you're currently voting for say they're going to do, but never do. And by the way, when they were given the keys to the car, what they do, they crash it right off the cliff, just like every other, every other person has been given the keys to the car. And why are we surprised at this point when you see the drunk driver walking and saying, Hey, can I have the keys? That it's going to be any difference of the situation. We give them the keys every single election cycle and then are shocked that the accident happens. So thank you, Jacob, for, for actually raising that up because I do think that needs to be talked about more because people candidly aren't talking about it. Right. I, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, one thing I will say is that in 8th District, most people here, if you actually sit down and speak with them, they have a libertarian mindset already. They just don't know what a libertarian is. They don't know what a libertarian stands for. I've had that question arise since we've started to work our way up to the campaign. I've said, you know, I've had people ask, what is a libertarian? What is, and that's that's a shame that, that that's a question. But I'm glad that I'm the one to be able to answer that and explain fully. Instead By the of way, some, how, how do you answer that? When, when, they, when you get hit with that question, what is a libertarian? What, what, is, what is the Jacob Turner response? Is it the Gary Johnson, socially liberal, fiscally conservative? No, no. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I believe that the. I'll answer that real quick, and then I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll go into what I what do Sorry, I yeah. explain. No, uh, there is uh, the the saying socially uh, uh, liberal, cons uh, physically conservative. That is dead. They've proven that they are all one and the same. Democrats are for war. They're for uh, cutting out free speech. Republicans are for growing the government and the national debt. There is no such thing. Now there is libertarian. Uh, being libertarian minded on social issues and then on physical issues. That is a whole different ball game. We're a different animal. We are about what we're saying. We're, we're about what we're preaching. What do I tell libertarians when they, or what do I tell people? What is a libertarian? And I say this, we are the people that say you should be able to live your life, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that no one should stand in the way of those pursuits so long as you do nothing to hurt someone else or to hurt their property. Just because you disagree. Exactly. Just don't because you people. Don't take their stuff. I love it. Just because you disagree with someone on a moral level, you feel that they're doing something uh, that you just don't agree with. Mind, we're about minding our own business. And I tell them, I say, look, are you tired of the fighting that's going on right now? And they all say the same thing. I'm, I'm so tired of it. I say, well, do you know why this is occurring? It's occurring because 50% of the nation 
wants to force their way of living on the other 50%. And it goes both ways. Yep. Only two things can occur when this happens. Only two things. Either one, one side dominates the other. And then that class of belief system becomes a second class citizen in that, in that nation. And they're trampled on. Their rights of uh, being able to speak out are, are going to be cut. They're going to be censored or conflict. I don't want either. I think if we take a step back and look at the bigger picture and say, look, I just want to run my business, make money, give my yeah. kids a good life, contribute to society in a positive way. And I'm OK with minding my business if I don't agree with my neighbor. It's the golden rule. Love your neighbor. You don't have to like what your neighbor does, but as long as he isn't causing harm or issue or or causing damage to anybody's property, let him let him live his life, his pursuit of happiness. That is the libertarian mindset. It's just it boils down to being a good person, a good person who just minds your own business. Agreed, Jacob. And that's what we've been trying to help uh, folks, especially candidates, uh, effectively articulate here in the program. And, and candidly, you know, that's something we aren't really seeing effectively out there. I've seen, you know, only a handful of candidates who have been able to really take those ideas and resonate them to your average person in a way that they can take away as not just, you know, this, you know, preaching principled stuff, but rather pertinent information that resonates to them on issues that are really the things that are mattering to them, things that they can see around them that are impacting them in their daily lives. So how about this? Let's segue right there to Missouri's eighth. So that's where you're running for Congress. And what are the issues right now as you're going out and talking to voters, Jacob, that you're seeing are the, the issues being raised up across the, the district? Are there some reoccurring themes that are pertinent to just the uh, 8th district particularly? Or are there maybe some national sentiments that you're seeing uh, resonate there as well? There's three topics that, that kind of float around or two topics that are major that float around on the national level that, that do affect our area as well. And then there's one a big one that's that's actually focused on our district. And, and we'll start with our district. Our district is having an economic issue. We have throughout time had a high level of poverty in our district. Now, our incumbent or our elected official at this moment, he wants to post all these things on his side about how he was he had the president's ear. He's, you know, he was President Trump's right hand man and all this. And he sells that to the people of 8th District. And this is what I want to ask. If the economy was going so great in the first two years of President Trump's election, why didn't your congressman do anything to bring jobs to this district? Why didn't he do anything to uh, to efficiently help small business thrive here in 8th District? He did nothing. We are actually worse off now than we have been before he came in in 2013. Wow. Our our economy needs help desperately. We are the poor we are if not the poorest district in Missouri. This has to be solved. And I will I am going to put this out on the show right now. This is something I'm going to do before I, the, our our campaign starts officially in February. We got to work early. February and we we go up in uh, the the actual election takes place in November. We started working about about a month and a half ago. We've really taken off because we have to get out there and get ahead of the curve. Every week I'm going to travel to a new small business all the way up until the election. I'm going Love to utilize that. I'm going to utilize my platform. All the people who are paying attention and believe me, they are paying attention now. For everybody who laughed, they're not laughing now. We are getting people jumping on board. People want the liberty movement. People are excited. They want change. They want something. They want, they want what they're promised. They're told, they're told their whole lives they live in a free society. And it's dawning on them with this COVID incident, with this COVID totalitarian actions. They don't live in a free society. They live in a society that's heavily on conditions. So the Bill of Rights can be trampled on at the at, at a whim. So they want something better, but I'm going to utilize my time now to start spurring on the economy and helping out small businesses. How you, awesome. I love that, Jacob. I love that. If you're a small business, I appreciate it. If you're a small business and you're in eighth district and you need, you need some help, you need some recognition, reach out to me on my Facebook page, Jacob Turner for eighth district Congress. What we will do is we will come visit your small business. We'll find out what you offer to the community and we will post it publicly 
to all the people who are paying attention so they can come check out your business. We'll bring attention to you. We'll help you get going. That's change. That's effective help in the community. That's what we do. We're about working for you. So let's move on to the next issue. By the way, really quick, before we go to the, the two national issues, that's where you're going next, right? Right. Just time out. <laughs> Probably hands down one of the best ideas I've heard from a candidate on the program. Kudos all around. That Thank That you. is not only something that we can talk about, right? And this, this is sales 101. Not just talking about ideas or solutions, but rather implementing the solutions right now, helping real people, showing them the value of what we're talking about and giving them, in this case, a platform that is phenomenal. So thank you, Jacob, for uh, for leading by example in this case. Now, uh, how about this? As I as we move forward, um, let's go to those to those national issues. What are the top two national issues that are impacting the eighth district there in Missouri as well? Number one would be how uh, COVID has been handled and how it's affecting people in this district mainly. Uh, but but to look at how the Bill of Rights has been trampled on nationally. We don't want this to occur again. No one wants this to occur again in our district. So I will fight to bring bills uh, to get the legislation so that we can block a lot of these a lot of these issues that have had that have occurred so that they won't happen again. One of the biggest big issues. I'll bring up a few big issues that are occurring with the COVID in our district. Please do, yeah. Be because our economy is so bad right now, a lot of young men have to travel off to the river boats to find work to support their families. Now, I have been contacted by these men where they've received emails that state that they will be forced to take the COVID vaccine, an experimental drug, or, or they will be fired. Or they will be fired. So now these, these gentlemen that are working hard, willing to spend a month away at a time to provide for their family, are being faced with be a lab rat, because that's what it is. It's an experimental drug, and I'm not afraid to say it, or lose your livelihood. That's unsat. That's unsat. And our government is allowing this to occur. We look at hospitals. I have a friend who they're having their first child. They're having their first child. And they're saying that he has to have his, his, uh, his vaccine card to prove that he's had his vaccines before he can watch the ultrasound to his child. We live in America, don't we? He's going to miss that moment. Now, I'm helping him reach out to find doctors who uh, and hospitals that will work with him who aren't about stepping on individual rights. And that is what it's about. It's about individual rights, the right to make a choice. I do not hold it against you if you choose to get the vaccine. That is your right and that is your choice. I, I respect that. All I am asking and the people from my district are asking is do not force it upon us if we are willing to go without. And what I would say to 8th District is that is the libertarian way. It's seeing someone else do something and don't attack them because you don't agree with it. And us libertarians, we have to remember this. We have to remember not to just go off and attack people because we see them getting the vaccine. That's their right. Let them choose. Let them choose to do that. That's fine. But we have to remember, we have to push the idea, don't force it on us. That's, that's when it becomes the issue. The second issue is this, gun control. I talked with Mr. Larry Sharp. He's a, he's a fantastic mind in, our, in, our, in the liberty movement. Um, he does a lot of good work. He brings on candidates. And I talked to him about all the issues that are taking place in New York. He says that it isn't about, it isn't the second amendment, it's the second suggestion. And I wanna tell people what occurs in these bigger cities eventually works its way here, eventually works its way here. We have to fight, and that's why I want to be at the national level. We have to fight for not only Missouri, but we have to fight for everybody else's liberty and freedom. If we allow this to occur in our nation, it will eventually come here. We can't stand for it. We have to fight for everybody's rights. That is, that is my goal, to not only take care, get my district thriving, Get it, get it small business, the backbone of our nation, get it motivated and the machine going, spur on our economy like it's never been before. And then I will pass the torch off to someone else. 
I'm not going to be a career politician. I'm on my way to medical school eventually. I want to work as an ER physician and help people save lives. That's my dream. I'm not coming in to be a career politician. I want to come in, fix the issue, and I want to pass it to another great American who can come in and keep it going. That's what I want. So let's let's uh, as we wrap the show uh, towards the end of the show here, Jeremy or uh, Jacob. Let's uh, let's kind of focus more towards. I guess a conversation with Jeremy Todd. Um, Jacob, let's, okay. let's, let's, yeah, you both have JT too, which makes it very confusing. Um, right. But no, how about this, Jacob? Let's uh, focus on let's say 2022. But that's the election, right? For uh, right. for your your you're right. So 2022, um, you win, right? Right. Defy the odds. The the libertarian. Not, let's not defy the odds. You're gonna win. Let's be real, right? You're gonna win. What does that next two years look like? What does the libertarian not just candidacy, but now a libertarian elected official, Jacob Turner, look like from a policy perspective, what are those wins that you're bringing back to uh, your, your district? Well, there's one thing that's uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, and I've seen the state, I've talked about this before. I see the state of Arizona has passed a bill uh, to go after people who are involved in human trafficking, uh, the owning and making of child pornography, child molestation. They're giving them life in prison. And I often ask, why would you punish someone for marijuana harder than you would punish one of these monsters that are out actively seeking to hurt a child? I have two daughters. This is something that means a lot to me. I will, I will work to go after the monsters that, that prey on, on the people who can't defend themselves. That's one thing I will do. I will also work to cut regulations and to get the government out of the way of small business. The American people, the American people are strong, smart, independent people who, if you can let them go, they will manifest their destiny and work with their hands and they will build something successful. But too, too often, too often, the government acts as a roadblock or they're working towards a goal and they're dragging the government along. We're going to work to get them out of the way. We're going to work to protect individual rights because that is what it's about. It's protecting the individual's rights, but also working with both parties on single issues that help move our agenda forward of having a more free society. And I understand that this isn't going to occur overnight. I understand that. I'm not... I'm not making any promises. I think anybody would be foolish to say they're just going to come in and with a magic wand change everything. But let's just turn the boat around. Let's start heading in the right direction. Let's show people what it's possible. Let's let's inspire and put hope in this nation that people who love this country and love liberty have a chance to step up and make a difference. That's what I hope to do. I like it, Jacob. Well, how about this? As we wrap up the show, um, it, we're recording here on Sunday, and your show is airing here on Sunday for the Sunday Candidate Highlight Series, the day before Memorial Day. So as a, as a veteran, uh, what would be your your pitch, your libertarian pitch um, for those out there regarding Memorial Day? For Memorial Day, I would say this. My heart goes out to anyone who's lost their lives in this war and to the families who've lost loved ones. I've served in the military. I've served overseas, uh, served in the Marine Corps for eight years. I understand the hardships. And I've also known Marines as friends who've lost their lives. So I know, I know the challenges of that situation. This is what I would say. Let's take this moment to honor and respect those people. But let's also think about the idea of pulling them out of senseless wars so that they have an, that people who aren't injured yet have an opportunity. What we are doing in this nation is we are taking patriotic Americans who love our country and we are sticking them in senseless situations where they lose their arms, they lose their limbs, they get TBI, they get injuries that you can see and some that you cannot, and they come back and they lose the war to mental illness. The suicide rate is an epidemic in our military. Let's take this moment to think about what memorial means and also to think about what we could do for the future troops. When we talk about things like being anti-war, doesn't mean we're anti-troop. I love the Marine Corps. I love my Marines. I would stand with them any day. 
And if there was a just war with an honest aggressor, I would fight for this country in a heartbeat. But this is a moment that we can reflect on what we've lost and also what we can save. That's what I would say. Well said. Thank you, Jacob. And, that, and that's why I wanted to have you say it, because not only um, do I think it's, it's great to, uh, to have the candidates give their perspectives, but I also think you having the perspective as someone who did serve, um, you know, it does give a little bit more uh, more merit. So thank you right. for uh, those kind of words. Well, that being said, uh, we are unfortunately getting hard pressed here on time, Jacob. So I want to make sure we're, we're leaving folks with a great call to action. And that is to be able to go ahead and find you and support your candidacy. So with that being said, Jacob Turner, where can folks go ahead and uh, find you online and uh, go ahead and follow you on social media? Uh, follow me at Jacob Turner. Jacob Turner for 8th District Congress on Facebook. The, we have a Facebook page and all the information for where I will be, public speech, uh, speak, uh, speeches or events, they will all occur on there. We also have JacobTurnerNationBuilder.com where you can go on it. And if you feel like you want to donate, we greatly appreciate it. We're not accepting uh, money from outside sources, uh, from donors or anything. We're only accepting money from people who believe in the movement, uh, regular everyday people. Uh, and, I, and also I'm self-funding. I've wrote my own money towards the movement. So you're not you're not donating to something I don't believe in or I don't believe uh, that I work hard for. I've, I've put my own money in this belief. Uh, what I would like to say real quick is that I hear the idea of splitting the vote a lot. People will say, oh, well, what about splitting the vote? And then the other party that we, we like less in this district will 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 win. Well, that isn't the case in 8th District. 80% of the vote goes to Republican, 20 to Democrat. Even if we split the vote, we're 20 away from the Democrats even getting close. That's a long way because they don't have the people here for this. So you have a chance to vote for who you believe in, vote for who you want in this election. That's what I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thanks for listening. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, thank you so much, folks, for joining us on today's episode of The Brian Eccles Show. And with that being said as well, Thank you, Jacob Turner, for joining the program. Thank you. All righty, folks, that's going to wrap up my conversation with Jacob Turner. He is running for Congress out in Missouri's 8th con Congressional District, that is. And uh, if you enjoyed today's episode or if you are out in uh, Missouri's 8th Congressional District, what you can do is do me a favor and share today's episode. And when you do that, make sure you go ahead and tag yours truly at B. Nichols Liberty, Twitter, Facebook, Minds.com, and Parlor.com. And also, please be sure to go ahead and support Jacob, follow his campaign, support his campaign. And if you are in, again, the 8th Congressional District there in Missouri, please do your part, help raise awareness for his campaign, go out, help knock on doors, whatever it may be. We need to go ahead and help get more libertarian candidates out in front of people, top of mind. And that requires us, the libertarian activists, to go out and do our parts and help them along the way. And with Jacob having three succinct issues to discuss to candidates, he's making your jobs infinitely easier, not a laundry list of 10 libertarian candidate uh, platform ideas you have to be prepared to talk about, but rather three issues that are specifically addressing not just a national perspective, but in this case, a, uh, an issues-based perspective for the 8th District there in Missouri. So folks, please do your part, help support Jacob's campaign. And if you enjoy the episode, well, I'd love to hear about it. Please do me a favor, email me, brian at briannicholsshow.com. Also, if you would uh, be so inclined, head over to briannicholsshow.com and look at the very top of the bar there. You'll see reviews. Hit on that reviews button and then go ahead and rate your five-star rating and review. And while you're there, go ahead and peruse with, for, uh, through the other five-star rating and reviews and, and see what folks are saying. You know, what value are folks getting from the program? Well, I, I've read them and I would love to hear what you value uh, value you're getting as well. So again, a quick five-star rating and review uh, there at briannicholsshow.com. Also, if you not, have not had the chance yet, head over to briannicholsshow.com forward slash Liberty Friends ebook, and you can sign up to get your awesome free copy of four easy steps you can implement now to sell liberty to friends and family. It is a phenomenal, easy to read liberty ebook that I wrote. Uh, yes, I wrote, um, and I'm giving it away to you for free uh, because I think it is something that's super, uh, super easy for us to just learn because there are super easy steps because we kind of do them every single day without realizing it. Um, but it is sales. It is approaching things through a solutions-based mentality, not trying to be right, but rather meeting people where they're at and the issues that they care about. So uh, if you want to get better at uh, being a better advocate for liberty and effectively selling ideas like liberty to friends and family, again, it's Liberty Friends ebook. I'm sorry, Liberty. Yeah, it's briannicholsshow.com forward slash Liberty Friends 
ebook. Uh, and also, folks, one ask if you are uh, if you've not had a chance yet, head over to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the Brian Nichols show. You are what keeps the lights on. You are what keeps us uh, having the opportunity to grow the program, reinvest into reaching new people. And thank you to all the uh, the support for my entry level sales reps and my account executives, five dollars a month and ten dollars a month over at the Patreon. But uh, either way, all my Patreon subscribers get one of these awesome "Don't Hurt People, Don't Take People Stuff" bumper sticker. That's right. See right here. It will pique some interest. But if you uh, you are like, hey Brian, listen, you know I can't go ahead and you know maybe become a five dollars contributing uh, supporter. I get it. It's okay. You can do the five star rating and review. Um, though I would greatly appreciate your support. But hey, here, how about this? I, I have a new way you can support the show. And at the same point in time, helping support an awesome libertarian organization that is proud libertarian because we are now syncing up. The Brian Nichols Show has a store at Proud Libertarian where you can go ahead and get our awesome new uh, snapbacks, bumper stickers, uh, t-shirts. I mean, the, the list goes on and on from Alexa overthrow the government to uh, don't hurt people, of course, and don't take their stuff. Uh, life gets better. Cool mask, bro. Question everything. Good ideas don't require force and more. I am so excited to have this brand new partnership with Proud Libertarian. So head over to Proud Libertarian, head over to their collections. It's the Brian Nichols show, and you can go ahead and support the show. Use code TBNS at checkout. You will get 10% off your order, and you can look awesome while rocking some awesome libertarian apparel and supporting the Brian Nichols show. So with that being said, coming up here on Monday, we are continuing with our conversation on sales, and that is with uh, Jeremy Todd returning to the program. To, and, and I that say today because we recorded on, on Sunday, peek behind the curtain. Uh, we, we discuss objections, overcoming objections. How can we go ahead and uh, really overcome these common objections we hear from the left and the right? From confrontation to conversation, I'm so excited to share this conversation with Jeremy here on Monday. So head over to the program, hit that subscribe button. If you have not yet, if you're on the YouTube, hit that big notification bell and the like button. But with that being said, it's Brian Nichols signing off here on The Brian Nichols Show for Jacob Turner. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.